of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And good morning to everyone. Good morning. So we've reached the fourth Sunday of Lent, of Easter, of course, and we're further into our lockdown over the COVID-19 virus. Let's celebrate this Mass together as best we can in mind and heart and spirit and offer God our service, ask God's help. Let's prepare our minds and hearts by asking pardon for our failings. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace earth, to his peace people on earth. earth. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, <coughs> you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, give us new strength from the courage of Christ our Shepherd. Attune our minds to the sound of his voice. Lead our steps in the paths he has shown. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd with a loud voice. The whole house of Israel can be certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hearing this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the Apostles, What must we do, brothers? You must repent. Peter answered, and every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise that was made is for you and your children, and for all those who are far away, for all those whom the Lord our God will call to himself. He spoke to them for a long time using many arguments, and he urged them, save yourselves from this perverse generation. They were convinced by his arguments and they accepted what he said and were baptized. That very day, about 3,000 were added to their number. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, 
In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The merit in the sight of God is in bearing punishment patiently when you are punished after doing your duty. This, in fact, is what you were called to do because Christ suffered for you and left an example for you to follow the way he took. He had not done anything wrong and there had been no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats, but he put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our faults in his own body on the cross so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds you have been healed. You had gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I tell you most solemnly, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but gets in some other way, is a thief and a brigand. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in, the sheep hear his voice. One by one he calls his own sheep and leads them out. When he has brought out his flock, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They never follow a stranger but run away from him. They do not recognize the voice of strangers. Jesus told them this parable, but they failed to understand what he meant by telling it to them. So he spoke to them again. I tell you most solemnly, I am the gate of the sheepfold. All others who have come are thieves and brigands, but the sheep took no notice of them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. He will go freely in and out and be sure of finding pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago, I visited Israel, and at one point our guide pointed out to us the remains of an ancient sheepfold. It was a square, about 30 meters on each side, and it was simply rough stones that had been gathered together to form a fence. And at one point, it was lower, and that was the gate and a shepherd would bring his sheep and he would help each of them over this lower section into the sheepfold. They would be guarded there during the night, all of them. Then in the morning, each shepherd would come and call his own sheep and they would recognize his voice and they would come to this gap in the wall and again he would help each of them over it so that each shepherd could quite literally say, as Jesus did, I am the gate of the sheepfold. I help mine in, I help them out, they know my voice, 
they follow me. And this image of Jesus as the good shepherd was immensely popular in the early church. If you go down into the catacombs in Rome, it's the most common image of Jesus painted on the walls of the catacomb. Because when the Christian people were suffering persecution, they wanted a God who was close to them, a God who had a personal interest and care for each one of them, a God who knew them, who knew each one and all the difficulties that each one had. They wanted that image of God. We live in a country where we number sheep in the tens of thousands. But a shepherd at the time of Israel was lucky if he had nine or ten sheep. They were his entire livelihood. So of course he cared for each one of them. Of course he knew them and knew their particular needs and looked after them. And it's that image of personal care that this idea of the Good Shepherd brings. We can think of God in three ways. We can think of God up there in the heavens, a God of power and majesty. We can think of God as a companion, a friend walking beside us. Or we can think of God as living within us, within our mind and heart and inspiring us there. And the Good Shepherd reflects the third of those ideas, of God within my mind and heart, knowing me, calling me, present with me at every moment. And God is especially present to people in time of need. So he is present with you and your family in this time of isolation, in this time of being alone within our own home, with our own family, hopefully, and sharing only with them. Able to talk with friends on the telephone, yes, but not meet them, not touch them. A time of isolation. It's a time when we need the Good Shepherd within our hearts, within our minds, knowing us, caring for each one of us, loving us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We join in prayer once again to our God. We implore God to be with us within our minds and hearts. We pray at this time, a crucial time when we're just beginning to come out of this crisis, when each day there is talk of a relaxation of restrictions, but a time when therefore there has to be special care because the one thing that must not happen is a relapse into a worse situation 
which could be worse than it was before if we were not careful. So we must gradually learn to come out of this and we must continue to accept the restrictions that are placed there for the good of all people in this country and in the whole world. For that, let us pray to our God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals who are suffering from the loneliness, from the isolation, from psychological problems within themselves or in their relationships. We pray for all those who find this life especially difficult and are struggling to cope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray once again for doctors and nurses and all the people working on the front line. We know from examples that appear on our television that there are places where danger is still very, very present. And they are the ones that, in our name, reach out to those who are sick. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves that we may not fail, that we may find strength not by just being there, but by reaching out ourselves in any way we can to other people and trying to help them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, this is a time of trial, but for that reason, it's also a time of growth. We can grow through trials. We can become better people. And we see that around us in the world. Some people are diminished by a crisis like this because they turn in on themselves. But many others grow because they reach out to others. Lord, we, may we grow in ourselves and in all parts of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, O Lord, 
that we may always find delight in these Easter mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, he who comes in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Anthony our Bishop, and the entire people you have gathered for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to God our Father with the prayer that Jesus himself has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, May we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who gave us this sacrament of his love. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Father, eternal shepherd, watch over the flock redeemed by the blood of Christ and lead us to the promised land. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We may just possibly be at the beginning of coming out of this time of isolation. Let's be doubly careful at this time and always and in all circumstances try to help other people as well. God bless. <laughs>